Hey guys, now in today's video, I'm gonna share with you a really easy project that you can make with your X-Tool laser engraver. Now, we're gonna be focusing on the P2 because the P2 has a phenomenal capability of cutting acrylic. And let's face it, as the year is starting, you know what all starts? Weddings. Now, if you'd like to look at a really easy hustle, something that you can make for a wedding, let me give you an idea. These are little drink stirs, personalized. This one, as you can see here, has been personalized with uh, my initial and my wife's. You can see what it looks like right here. And here I have another one that's been personalized. And this one, not only does it have the two initials, but it also has the year. These would go into your champagne glasses. This could go into your cocktail glasses and are gonna make weddings incredibly memorable. And we did this with the X-Tool P2 laser engraver. Let's face it, X-Tool has a lot of different products. They have acrylic in a variety of colors. You can use pink acrylic. You're gonna see all the ones I have here. Uh, you have this iridescent acrylic, right? And one of my favorites, mirrored acrylic. So here's a gold mirrored acrylic. And they have a lot of different types of acrylic that you can make. The whole point that is the P2 will allow you to make some customized wedding favors. And I have to tell you, to give you a sense, the wedding favors, if you go on Etsy and you look to purchase these, 50 of these can run you an average of $75. Think about that, $75 for 50. Now that's a good business. Let me show you how I made them. All right, now creating our stirs is a really simple process and I've broken this down into a couple steps here. Uh, and we'll go over the steps first, as you can see what's involved for each one. First, you're gonna start out with some basic shapes. You're gonna start out with a circle on the top, a circle on the bottom, and then a vertical bar. Once you've created these components, you're going to bring them together. We're going to unite them to make them one piece. Then you're going to add your text. This actually becomes a stencil or a template that you'll be able to use over and over again. Now, if you're going to create this type of stir, same process. You basically start with your vertical bar, a circle. You're going to bring them together. And then once you bring them together, you're going to add your text, connect them, and then unite them again. So let me show you how this works. So the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna go in and choose a circle. Now, the circle that you choose could be of any size that you want based on your preferences for the size of the stir. Once you've created your circle, you're then gonna to go to your next shape, which is gonna be your rectangle. And I'm gonna have them touching each other somewhat. And I'm gonna bring it down to around this height. And again, the height that you choose is gonna be up to you. You can choose whatever you'd like. Let's go ahead and move this over a little bit. I'm gonna add another circle, and that other circle is gonna be here, and that's gonna be the bottom of the stir, right? And now that I have them on, the key thing is that all of these are connected, right? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work with my alignment, and I'm gonna do a vertical alignment, or actually a horizontal alignment. So now they're all aligned, and now I'm gonna do a unite. Once you unite them, now you have the shape of the stir, right? So we've basically created our pieces, right? And now we've combined them to create one piece. Now, one other thing that you could do is add the separator. I see a lot of stirs on Etsy where they have a little separator in there. And all that is is a rectangle that's being placed inside. And this is, I'm just eyeballing it here. We want this to be in the center again. And I'm going to go into my range, or actually my line. I'm going to do a horizontal. And then now that I like the way that looks like, I'm going to unite it as well. Now, I've noticed this happens at times where things disappear. So I have times what I've done is I have just left it as a group. So uh, what we'll do is we'll leave it as a grouped item. Let me turn off my background, right? And we'll go ahead and group it. So now these are all together. So basically what I've done now is I've created my template. I have my separator. I have this part of the stir. And the last step is to add the text. The text is really simple. All you're gonna do is go into your text, choose your text. You're gonna have some text that will show up and you can see that right there. You will put in the initial that you want. I'm gonna be putting in an M uh, for this one. I'm gonna resize it so I can see more or less what size I'm looking for. And then what I'm gonna do is move it over a little bit. And we'll move it a little bit more right there. And I can now change the font and I like Times New Roman for this. So I'm going to do Times. And you can choose any, any font that you want. And now I have my font. I'm going to do that to get my initials in. And then what I could do is I can resize this bar if I'd like to be able to put a calendar date. 
for the event. Now, you can use this for weddings, anniversaries, graduations. And remember, guys, these stirs, if you look them up on Etsy, you could get a batch of 50 stirs for $80. And you can do this on the P2 laser engraver, and it just takes seconds to, to cut out from a sheet of acrylic. So you just continue to go through these steps. You put in all of your... Uh, the rest of the, your, your second initial and the actual date that you'd like. And then what you would do is you would group these together so that you can have them all together. Um, and basically you would see something like this. Now I'll share with you my power settings. My power settings for something like this would be set to 100. So we're going to do a cut. We're going to set this to 100. And my speed would be 5. This is for the P2 laser engraver to cut out this object. So that's how you make this specific stir. Let's move on to the next one. Now the next stir is using the same process that we had before. We're gonna start with a bar and a circle, and then we're gonna unite them. Once we unite them, we're gonna get some text, overlap them to our liking. You'll choose the font that you want, and then you'll connect it to the actual stir itself, and then the last step is gonna be a unite. So we'll go through that process again. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my rectangle. All right, pull it down. You'll figure out whichever height you think is appropriate for you. I'll get my circle. Hold the shift button down so that I have a nice circle. I don't want it to be too big. I'm going to go ahead and do my alignment here. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll do a combine. Notice how it disappears now. And now the next step is to work with the text. I've already done that. This is a pretty straightforward process. So I'm just going to copy this so that you can see how this works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over. And what I'm going to try to do is bring this M down so that it is sitting right on top of the stirs. You see how it's combined now? Or it's right, it's not combined, it's touching it. Now I'm going to grab both of them. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do another Unite. Now watch what happens. Now, all of a sudden, this is part of the stir. The M and the N are together, and now I have my stir. It's that simple to create these stirs. And again, 75, 50 of these, 70 to 80 bucks. This is how quickly you can make them. Uh, same thing I'll do here. I'm going to set my cut settings, 100, speed of 5. And all I have to do now is process. So let's go to the P2 and see how it works. Now we're looking at our P2 and I have a sheet of acrylic in place and I've been doing some cutouts. Uh, one of the things that you want to do is you want to maximize the space that you have on your uh, laser and you know not have any wasted material. So what I tend to do is as I'm putting my pieces in, I try to make sure that I can use every single spot. So like right here, I had done a cutout and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a stir here. I'm going to grab another stir. I'm going to put it right there and I'm going to copy this, paste it, put that guy right there. It's aligned, paste it. And I'll probably bring them all up because I really want to get to the top corner, right? So we're going to grab each one of these and I'm going to just nudge them up just a little bit so we can get a little bit closer to the top. So I have very little waste, right? I'm going to paste now that I have these over here, do the same thing again. So you can see how I'm trying to maximizing, or I'm going to maximize that a sheet of acrylic. And you can see how they're in place. Now I'm going to grab this guy right here, do the same thing, paste it, put it right in the middle so I can get this space used up. Paste this next one here, put it right here, paste another one. That guy's aligned, paste another one. And you'll just continue to do this until you get everything in place. And you'll notice that I'm basically leveraging as much as I can of the acrylic because again, I don't want to have any waste and I'll just do this throughout. Now, one of the things that you could do is you can actually uh, copy this. So I have it right here. And you'll notice that I can actually fit. It looks like I can fit one more. So we're going to copy this one right here. We're going to do a paste. I want to see if we can fit one more here. One more. Can we do it? Yes, we can. So if you notice, I have one, two, three, four, five, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 here. This guy over here is 14. 
So we're able to get 14 stirs here. And I can actually take some of these stirs and lay them this way and also get a whole bunch more here and do the same thing so that I can maximize the amount and reduce my waste. Now here's one other way to do this. And this is actually the fastest way to do it. Uh, I can actually select the stir that I want to work with. I can go here into array and I can create a grid array. Now the grid array, I'm going to maximize the number of columns that I want. Notice how they're showing up. And I'm just going to just do one row. I'm not going to do two rows, right? So these are the ones that I want. And I can create some spacing if I want, right? Whatever looks good. And now notice how many I have done, right? Now I'll grab this. I'll copy it, paste it over here, rotate it. And I'll bring it over here. And then do the same thing I did manually just a couple seconds ago. Just align it right here. This looks like uh, it would look good. And then let it go. And now I have all of these stirs ready for cutting. It's that simple. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.